Hi there. In this video, I'll be answering a question on the Doppler effect. Calculating the speed of a train from the frequency of its horn and the frequency heard by an observer as the train moves towards her. We'll also be explaining why the frequency of the sound appears to change as the train moves away. This is a question from the 2017 CFE Hire paper. A student is on a stationary train. The train now accelerates along a straight level track. The student uses an app on a phone to measure the acceleration of the train. At last, somebody putting their smartphone to good use rather than just playing games or checking the social media posts. Anyway, the train accelerates uniformly at 0.32 ms to the minus 2 for 25 seconds. We're then asked to state what's meant by the acceleration of 0.32 ms to the minus 2. Here then, we could think of this equation for acceleration. V minus U is the change in velocity and T is time in seconds. That means that an acceleration of 0.32 ms to the minus 2 means that the velocity increases by 0.32 meters per second each second. Part 2 then asks us to calculate the distance travelled by the train in 25 seconds. This is a fairly straightforward question and to answer it we use this equation of motion. We're told the values of acceleration A and time T in the question, and we're also told that the train is initially stationary, so its initial velocity U is zero. When we substitute these values into the equation, we get an answer of 100 meters. Here's part B of the question. Later in the journey, the train is traveling at a constant speed as it approaches a bridge. A horn on the train emits sound of frequency 270 hertz, the frequency of the sound heard by a person standing on the bridge is 290 hertz. The speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second. Part one then asks us to calculate the speed of the train. Let's make more space to work out the answer. So the equation of choice here is this one. FO is the observed frequency, 290 hertz. FS is the frequency of the source, 270 hertz. V is the speed of sound, 340 meters per second, and Vs is the speed of the source. This is what we're trying to find, the speed of the train. I'll substitute these values into the equation before we work out what to do with the bottom line. When the train moves towards the observer, the observed frequency, FO, is greater than the actual source frequency, Fs. To make this the case, we want a lower number in the bottom line, so we must be using the minus sign. Now, all we have to do is to rearrange to find Vs, the speed of the train, which is easier said than done. First off, I'm going to divide both sides by 270, then multiply both sides by 340 minus Vs. I'll then divide both sides by 290 divided by 270. Almost there. This is just maths at this point, and you might find that you can find the answer yourself using less steps. After getting rid of the brackets at the left-hand side of the equation, I'll subtract 340 from both sides, which gives me negative Vs as the subject of the equation. Taking out a trusty calculator, the right-hand side works out to be negative 23.4482.7586 metres per second, or negative 23.4 metres per second to three significant figures. So obviously, Vs is 23.4 meters per second. I strongly suggest that you try working this out for yourself, as it's a bit tricky mathematically. Finally, we've got B part two. The train continues to sound its horn as it passes under the bridge. Explain why the frequency of the sound heard by the person standing on the bridge decreases as the train passes under the bridge and then moves away. You may wish to use a diagram. So if we're going to draw a diagram, then we could start with this, the train itself, which of course is moving in this direction. The motion of the train causes the wave fronts to bunch up at the front of the train and space out at the back. As the train approaches you, you hear a higher frequency because the train travels a short distance towards you in the time that successive wave fronts are emitted. As the train moves away, you hear a lower frequency as each successive wave front is emitted from a distance which is greater than the last. To answer our question, we could say, when the train is moving away, there are fewer wave fronts per second heard by the person on the bridge, explaining why they hear a lower frequency as the train moves away. We could also say, behind the train, the wave fronts are further apart. 
Together with our diagram, this would be enough to get the marks. And alas, we're brought to the end of yet another video. If you found it useful, then please subscribe to receive updates when new videos are released. If you've already subscribed, then remember to spread the word to anyone else who might find them of help. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.